Hello Visual Effects people, I'm AK and this is Fluid Ninja Live 1.9. Briefly talking about the new features. The Collision Painter has been updated, so we could track more objects and Ninja could interact with hundreds of bones and primitives. We have converted the main base material into a material function so it could be included to multi-layer materials in case you're doing uh, landscapes and doing snow or sand coverage. Uh, this makes your life much easier. And we have smaller improvements like uh, support for metahumans, a few bugs fixing uh, with uh, the object tracking based on tags, and we have improved caustics with a new volumetric texture plus a new foamy water surface material for stormy seas. And before starting introducing all these features, I would like to recommend this all-in-one tutorial video on YouTube. And if you roll down to the video details, you could see it starts with a definition of what Ninja is. And in two hours we are ending up setting up effects from scratch. So it is explaining all the basic concepts. And in the project you could find a belonging level which is called the new introduction so I'm just getting there and I would like to start here by explaining that Ninja before performing the fluid simulation is um, capturing the position of these objects or bones that we are interacting with and painting the trajectories for these objects this is what we call the collision painter. Now this thing has been a bottleneck until now, so we could have tracked like uh, 10 or 20 objects ideally, but I'm getting to this new level, which is number 34, and I would like to demonstrate how this new collision painter, oh by the way, I'm enabling the FPS O-Mater, and so uh, you could see that we are fluctuating between 180 and 280 FPS and this whole setup is running on my RTX 3080 card. So we are tracking 200 objects here and the FPS is fluctuating because uh, these balls are bouncing so uh, as you could see in the top left corner the number of objects that are interacting with the water is changing every second. Anyway the average FPS is be above uh, 200 and uh, this is a major improvement so let me show you where this feature could be enabled I am uh, sorry I just would like to get closer to the pound so I'm selecting uh, this single Ninja Live simulation actor on level going to the details panel selecting Ninja Live component and under live interaction here is this new feature called Use Painter Version 2 to track objects. If I switch this off, the system is falling back to Painter Version number 1. For compatibility reasons, you might need this. Anyway, I start the same play, and as you could see, the frame per second is fluctuating between um, 40, that's the bottom, and 70, that's the top. So, and the system is seriously, uh, you could feel it's already lagging. So we have like uh, three times or four times uh, improvement in performance in case we are tracking a lot of objects. Of course, if we are tracking uh, a low number of objects, like a single object, the performance is approximately the same. Anyway, so this has been a, a bottleneck for a long time we could not track too many of these objects and bones and I'm really happy that this uh, collision painter has been improved now right uh, we have another demonstration level for this I'm going to the content browser and in the tutorial folder there is this uh, 34b collision painter for bones so we have two setups on this level I'm gonna talk about this guy a bit later on and this one is a flaming burning pound uh, we have the pawn actor itself and it has Ninja Live as a component embedded and we have another Ninja Live actor which is as we could see in the outliner is parented to the pawn actor so we have two Ninja simulations running here one is responsible for the flames 
and the other one is responsible for the smoke. And we are tracking a lot of bones here. But with the new tracker it is uh, it's easy to do and we have no performance issues. So I'm really happy about this. And the other stage is demonstrating how we could draw lines between these track points, drawing trajectories. So uh, please have a look at these uh, three balls, each moving relatively fast, and we have like a nice continuous trajectory behind the objects. So if I select Ninja Live Actor and visit the Details panel, the Live Component, the Live Interaction, here is this option, connect track points with lines. If I switch this off, you could see this um, continuous line trajectory becomes uh, to this uh, track of separated points. So we are not drawing lines anymore. And in all the Ninja versions, we could track only a single object and draw line trajectory for it. And now we have this option where we could draw lines for any number of objects. So uh, that's what we have. And so much about this new Collision Painter. You could read more in the level place text and reading by reading the tooltips. And moving on to demonstrate the new features. Um, here is this level. And so the next one is multi-layer materials. And in the content browser we could spot that in the output materials per base materials, here is this uh, main output material called Ninja Output Word Space Generic. This has been used for a lot of things. Basically all uh, word space materials are using this, be it snow or sand or water. And so we have converted this uh, material into a material function. And if I double click on this multi-layer material example, material example, you could see that this is uh, the Ninja Live word space material as a function. And so you could combine it with your own materials and they could be included into this master material, merging them or blending between them. So it's much easier to construct uh, complex landscape materials. I'm closing this and visiting uh, a usual demonstration stage, which is uh, use case 80, snow. So this has been included in the previous release, but if I go to this rocky part of the stage, you could see that here uh, we are blending between these uh, snow-covered, ninja-controlled material and this simple brown rocky material. So this is how a, a multi-layer material functions, and it, it becomes much more easy for you to create these materials on your own. Now that uh, Ninja Live uh, root space material is a function, available as a function. Next thing. Smaller improvements. So let us talk about metahumans. Metahumans are new complex characters for Unreal Engine 5. And by looking at them, at the actor details, we could see that uh, we have a lot of skeletal meshes here organized in a hierarchic structure. And in previous ninja versions, we had problems by tracking the bones in these hierarchical structures, and it is all fixed now, so uh, metahuman humans are working perfectly. And we could track all the bones, even if we are tracking to this physical mode and using them as a ragdoll. Ninja is capable to track all bones perfectly. So that's it about metahumans, another major improvement. Returning to this list of features, I would like to emphasize uh, this improved tagging. This is partly related uh, to metahumans and other hierarchical meshes. So some bugs have been fixed. And also we have a new um, tutorial level in the content folder per tutorial per levels called uh, number 33. And so this level is um, explaining how Ninja is using tagging in general. 
We have uh, these traditional methods, like assigning materials to surfaces using, using tags. This is called the direct drive. In previous videos and manual chapter 29 is introducing this. We are also using tags uh, to apply materials on landscapes or identify targets for the floor snapper. These are also introduced in earlier videos. But this time, let me talk about tracking objects. So, normally, um, when Ninja is tracking objects, and let me select this actor and going to the details panel. So normally, um, we are using these options available at live interaction. And here, overlap filter inclusive object type. Sorry, I'm a bit annoyed by the uh, tooltips, so I just switched this off. So at the details panel, I have defined word dynamic and pawn. And here is this drop down menu, roll down menu. So we could select what kind of objects uh, we would like to track with Ninja. We could add and remove categories. But the point is that we are defining object types. So as you could see, on this example stage called stage one, we are using this object type or class filters and this is set to dynamic meshes and pounds so it is ignoring physics bodies and static meshes and if I uh, add static mesh as a category to be tracked and I restart the simulation here uh, the static mesh is also detected so this is the traditional way in Ninja to, uh, to define what kind of objects we would like to track now, in version 1.7, we have introduced a new method called tagging. And this is very good if you would like to um, have um, some kind of selectivity, because these uh, guys on the left are all dynamic meshes, and these guys on the right are all pawns, but say we do not want to track all pawns or all dynamic meshes. So if I select the Ninja Live Actor, at the Details panel, the Live Interaction, here we have this option called uh, track actor primitive components and track actor skeletal mesh components using tags. So I'm providing a tag here and if I select the skeletal mesh and type in tag and select the component itself, the skeletal mesh component, you could see that I have been tagging this skeletal mesh uh, component while uh, if I select this pawn and again, visiting the skeletal mesh component, we have zero tags. And as a result, Ninja is tracking the tagged version. And so it's a very good way to select between objects. And it has been a source of confusion. Uh, let me tell you why. By looking at this stage, we have um, a hierarchical structure of submeshes. S uh, so this one, as you could see, this double pound is a single actor. And at the actor details panels, uh, you could see that similar to the metahuman, we have two skeletal mesh components. One of them is uh, being tagged and the other one is not. And as a result, um, Ninja is tagging only, uh, sorry, Ninja is tracking only the bones of that component that we have been tagging. The same applies to static meshes and dynamic meshes and all kind of objects. So tagging is a uh, not only a method to select between actors, but also uh, it is selective to components. We should not forget that uh, tagging is all, always happening on the component level, but in case we have an actor with multiple components, we could use that to differentiate between these components. And one final uh, fact to increase complexity, that uh, using the object type filters or class filters and the tags is additive so they could be used together if I select this ninja live actor I could see that we have defined word dynamic as an object type to track this means that ninja is tagging all objects all actors which are word dynamic this one and this one as well but in the same time we have been using tagging to be selective for one of these uh, skeletal meshes as you could see, uh, this one is tagged and this one is not. As a result, and because the two methods are additive, so they could be combined, we are tracking all dynamic objects and only that single pound with the tagged skeletal mesh component. And this is all uh, described under the stages. The green lines indicate where you could look up these functions at the Ninja Live detail panel. 
And so we have all these examples besides each other. So um, I really hope that there will be no uh, confusion in the future about um, using class filters and tagging and all this together. And here's this final case, because uh, in the previous cases, Ninja has been an actor and we might have parented it to the pawn or not, but it has been a single uh, individual actor. And in this case, uh, the pawn is the single actor here and we have added Ninja Live as a component. And this is described in, since Ninja Live version 1.0 that in case if we add Ninja Live component uh, to actors, there is no overlap detection. We should go to the component details per live interaction and enable continuous interaction with owner actor. So this is like a serious limitation. If Ninja Live is, is functioning as a component in some other actor, it is tracking only uh, the systems inside the owner. So in this case, I've defined that I would like to track the pawn type components. This means uh, the skeletal mesh and I have also uh, by selecting um, an initial life component I have also defined what bones to track so we have been using this object type or class filtering but this time we are tracking only the components of the owner and this time the owner is uh, the pawn itself so this is like a separate case very well described in all the previous tutorials I just wanted to emphasize that this is different compared to those cases when we are using Ninja Live as an actor. And this is like a, a, providing us with limited possibilities to track only parts of the owner. Um, so much about this level and about tagging. Returning to features, we have two more eye candies to go. Updated caustics and the new dense uh, foamy water surface material. With caustics, we have added a new volumetric texture, Unreal Asset, and visiting this uh, original demonstration level called number 16, use case number 16, we could compare these two materials, the original on the left and the new one on the right, which is a bit more appealing in my opinion. Important information placed here how we are using mip mapping to blur these textures from a distance which is important if we do not want them to look very repeated in large scenes so that is one way to adjust sharpness and so all levels which are using caustics have been updated to use this new version this is above the water and under the water as well so this applies for all levels you could switch back to the original acoustics by selecting uh, the ninja live vector locating where the output material is which is under live generic and uh, i'm sorry this is the actor i've been looking for so um here we go secondary output materials the second one is used which is uh this guy and if I select parameter groups and go to single layer water options this is where you pick your volumetric textures to be used for caustics and as you could see uh, this reference is uh, pointing um, to this second updated texture now uh, moving on to these foamy waters I'm going to the stormy coastline example and as we could see, here is this thick foamy uh, surface I've been talking about. And it is ideal for stormy waters. If I slow down this a little bit and pull down the level main lights, you could see that uh, it's responding to light. Or if I am. Um, setting the level to a night scene and we have this light tower again uh, the light coming from the tower is influencing the foam on the surface so this is uh, made for these stormy uh, chaotic waters 
and that's it um, thank you for joining me on this uh, introduction of live 1.9 features and have a nice time doing VFX see you